What's going on everybody? Kalipas Tech here, coming back at you with another video. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Cricut Ovation 2 and going over everything you need to know about this phone to help you decide if it's the right one for you. Now, before we go any further, I do wanna remind you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It helps out the channel a lot. But with that being said, let's get into the video. So this phone has a 6.82 inch LCD display with a resolution of 720p, a PPI of 263, and an aspect ratio of 20 and a half by nine. We got a water drop notch up here for the front facing camera, and this camera is eight megapixels. Overall, the bezels are decently thin, except for this little bottom thing down here, but most phones seem to have a little thicker bezel at the bottom, I don't really know why. But overall, I would say the display and the design in general do look pretty good. Now the one thing that really stands out to me about this display is the size. At 6.82 inches, this phone is definitely on the larger side. And unlike some phones out there, it's not that bulky either. It does feel really slim to hold in your hand. So I think they did a really good job with this phone in that regard. The thing that always bothers me about phones this big is usually they're just kind of uncomfortable to hold and they're a little bit thicker than they need to be, but with this phone, it feels just right. Despite being 6.82 inches, when you hold it, it really doesn't feel like it's that big, but at the same time, you're gonna get that benefit from having a super large display for content consumption. So if you're streaming videos, playing a game, viewing photos, even reading, everything's gonna show up better on a larger display, giving you a better experience overall. Now this phone has 32 gigabytes of internal storage with micro SD card expansion up to two terabytes. Honestly, I don't think 32 is very impressive for internal storage on the phone, but for actual practical application, I like to keep pretty much everything on the phone itself. So having only 32 gigabytes of internal storage is a drawback for this phone especially considering there are plenty of other phones in this price range that have 64 in some very few but still a handful that have 128 so only having 32 gigabytes of internal storage with micro sd card expansion or not is a drawback in this day and age there's no wireless charging with this phone no big surprise there but we do have a fingerprint scanner right here on the rear in a more classic spot a lot of phones nowadays have in-display fingerprint scanners or fingerprint scanners on the power key, but this one has it right on the rear. Pretty normal spot for it and not bad either. So let's give it a try. There we go, one more time. And there we go. So as you can see, this fingerprint scanner is really fast and responsive. No problems there. So now taking a look at the rear camera setup, we got a 13 megapixel main camera, a five megapixel ultra wide camera, and a two megapixel depth sensing camera. So pretty good stuff. I definitely appreciate the ultra wide camera. Not every phone has that, even phones that are much more expensive than this one. So that is a real nice feature to have. Now it doesn't have a macro camera, which some people are gonna be disappointed by. I personally never use that feature. So to me, it wouldn't matter. But if you do, keep this in mind because you're gonna wanna look for a different device that actually does have a macro camera. But that being said, with this current setup, it's pretty good and the overall camera quality isn't too bad either. For video, this phone has a max quality of 1080p in both the rear and the front cameras, so nothing unexpected there. Internally, we're getting three gigabytes of RAM with the MediaTek Helio A22 processor. I ran a Geekbench 5 benchmark test on this phone and it came back with a single core score of 149 and a multi-core score of 453. So if you ask me, this is really not very powerful. In comparison, you can get a Samsung Galaxy A12 that has a multi-core score of 965, which is at least decent for not that much more than this. And there are plenty of other Cricut phones that have a lot more processing power than this in the same price range. So the bottom line is, if you're looking for something that does have a little bit more processing power that can do a few more things, or just want a faster device in general, then this is probably not gonna be your best option. Because with this type of processing power, this phone's really not gonna be good for much beyond regular activities like light web browsing and social media use. 
and maybe a few lower end games, and then your basic mobile functions like talking and texting, anything beyond that like more complex games, video editing, even heavier social media use. I've seen phones much more powerful than this one still struggle with certain features of Instagram and TikTok. So honestly, if you're gonna be doing any of that stuff, I would look for a more powerful device, but if you're only using your phone for really basic functions, and don't anticipate that changing anytime soon, then this should still be okay. Now for the battery of this phone, it's not horrible, but honestly, it's not that impressive either. We got a 3,900 milliamp hour battery. It's at least better than the iPhone 12, so I will give it that. But at the same time, if having a good battery is a priority for you, there's so many better options out there. Phones with 5,000 milliamp hour batteries that support really powerful fast charging, even in this price range, really aren't very hard to come by. So to get a phone that only has a 3,900 milliamp hour battery and a processor that really isn't very strong, if you're in that situation and knowingly get a phone like this, you're probably not too concerned with performance overall in just looking for something for basic activities and light use and probably don't need any more than that. But if you do, if you are going to be using your phone a little bit more heavily, maybe you have a more mobile lifestyle and can't wait around for it to charge all the time, then you're probably going to want a device with a bigger battery. Now another disappointing thing about this phone is that it doesn't have NFC. In case you don't know what it is, NFC is the technology behind contactless mobile payment services like Google Pay, Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, all that. And without NFC, you can't use those features. And since those features are becoming more and more popular as time goes on, I really think every phone should have it. So seeing that this phone doesn't is a disappointment and a drawback if you were planning to use that feature. So now that we've gone over some of the specs of the phone, let's take a closer look at the hardware. So on the left here, we got the slot for the SIM card and the micro SD card. On the bottom, we got a three and a half millimeter headphone jack, the microphone, a USB-C port, and the speaker. On the right side, we got the power key and the volume keys. On the top, we got the noise canceling microphone. And on the back, we got the camera setup, our flash, and our fingerprint scanner right here, as well as a Cricut logo at the bottom. Overall, the phone has a glossy, super reflective material, as you can see here, that picks up a fair amount of fingerprints as well. So if that bothers you, then keep this in mind. But honestly, I personally don't care how many fingerprints it picks up because you can simply just wipe it off and it's gonna look just fine. Or if you wanna put a case over it, something like that, it's really not that hard of a problem to solve. But at the same time, if it does bother you, then definitely keep that in mind. The glossy finish is not for everyone and it doesn't always look good. But I think in this situation, on this phone, it does look decently nice. Like I said before, the phone is pretty sleek for what it is, especially considering how large the display is. And I really like that about it. It reminds me of the Motorola Moto G Stylus that phone also is really big, but has a sleek design to the point where you don't really even notice its size and you can easily put it in your pocket and forget it's there. And I really like that about phones like this. Another thing about entry level phones like this that sometimes bugs me is how cheap the materials are. But with this phone, you don't get that feel. It doesn't really feel very premium, don't get me wrong. But at the same time, it really doesn't feel like a cheap phone. So that's another nice thing. The only thing I would really change about the design is get rid of this extra thickness on the bezel down here and change the water drop notch to a hole punch for the front facing camera. I think hole punches in this day and age with that modern look tend to look a lot better and make the phone appear just nicer overall. But other than that, I do like the design. It's really simple, really practical, no unnecessary buttons like an assistant button or anything like that. So I am a fan. Now in conclusion, my final thoughts about the Cricut Ovation 2. I'm not gonna lie, I have kind of mixed feelings about this phone. On one hand, it has a huge display, which is gonna be perfect for content consumption. It has a nice design to go along with it, and it has an ultra-wide camera, which not every phone in this price range does, so that's another good thing. Sure, it doesn't have a macro camera, but I personally think an ultra-wide is a little bit more valuable because of its wide variety of uses. But then the bad stuff about this phone is honestly pretty bad in my opinion. I mean, it has a really weak processor. It has a really small battery, especially for a phone like this. Typically, phones in this price range are at least going to have a 4500, if not 5000 milliamp hour battery. 
Those have become so common these days that I honestly wouldn't trust a 3900 milliamp hour battery if I were gonna use my phone heavily throughout the day. So if you are more of a power user, that's something to keep in mind. In addition to this, the storage is honestly not very good either. And if you're anything above an average user, if you have a decent amount of apps and photos and videos and that sort of thing, then that 32 gigabytes is gonna go by real fast now, technically there is micro SD card expansion, but I don't really wanna focus on that that much just because almost every Android phone these days does have that feature. To me, I would much rather keep everything on the device itself if I can. So in my opinion, if you have to use a micro SD card at all, you might wanna consider getting another phone that has more storage in general. So overall, when considering the positives and negatives of this phone, I can really see a main type of purpose this phone can be for. I think the main group who's really gonna get a lot of value out of this phone is those who don't really need a device for anything fancy and are just gonna be doing basic activities like taking photos, streaming videos, and some light social media and web browsing. That's really where this phone's gonna come in handy because that kind of activity doesn't really take a whole lot of processing power. For light use, you're really not gonna have to worry too much about the battery. And of course, if you're just going on social media and streaming videos and maybe taking some photos here and there, you don't really need a lot of storage either. So in that situation, this phone, especially considering the large display and the price range it's in, is gonna provide a lot of value. But if you're more of a power user, if you're doing things that needs a little bit more processing power, or if you have a more mobile lifestyle, and use your phone heavily so you need a larger battery. If you're in a situation like that, there are lots of better options out there for you. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you found this information useful as well. If you did, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next video.